Hello all, welcome back to Lumiapedia, where we learn about the newest test subjects. Today, we'll be looking at the newest sniper character, Theodore. Theodore uses his long-range skills to keep his distance while interrupting enemies and assisting allies. Equipment check, done. Let's get started. By utilizing his screen, Theodore can enhance his attacks. Theodore excels best in teamfights rather than 1v1 duels. Let's get into Theodore's skills. Theodore's skills include Energy Cannon, Power Screen, Spark Nade, Blast Energy Field, and his passive, Sapphire Protocol. Let's talk about the passive. Theodore's passive has three effects. His first passive gives invisibility for a short period of time when walking out of a bush, gaining movement speed and a shield. Any actions other than moving removes his invisibility. The second part of his passive allows Theodore to lower cooldowns of his skills by hitting enemies with basic attacks. His Q gets additional reduction from the effect. Basic attacks against non-test subjects only give half of the reduction. Due to his third passive, Theodore cannot build HP with equipment. Instead, additional HP for equipment are translated into attack speed. Theodore's Q is Energy Cannon. As a passive, Theodore gets increased range for the next basic attack after hitting an enemy. Energy Cannon is a charging skill, and Theodore is slowed while charging the skill. After charging, shooting the ray towards the enemy deals skill damage and heals allies. The range for Energy Cannon changes depending on the charge time. Shooting Energy Cannon towards the power screen causes the screen to shoot another ray forward. Energy Cannon is Theodore's bread and butter. Charging the skill does not give additional damage, but gives additional range. You can play from a safe distance as long as you constantly charge the skill. There's a bit of delay before the power screen shoots out the ray, so Theodore himself can actually heal himself through this method. Theodore's W is power screen. He creates a power screen in a location. Abilities that pass through power screen disperse through the enemies. Shooting basic attacks through the screen deals additional damage. Throwing spark nade, the Z, through the screen increases the speed and range. Theodore's power screen strengthens his kit. Throwing spark nade through the power screen allows Theodore to root multiple enemies. Dispersing basic attacks also lets Theodore lower his cooldowns with his passive as well. Good usage of power screen is part of Theodore's skill ceiling. Power screen is the most effective when used in a small hallway or areas with wild animals to utilize the dispersion. Theodore's E is Spark Nade. The skill has the same passive as his energy cannon, but do not stack in effect. Enemies hit by Spark Nade are slowed and become a target. Theodore gets vision on his targets, and attacks against the targets deal additional skill damage and root. Theodore's Spark Nade is a great teamfight tool that allows Theodore to root multiple enemies when combined with Power Screen. Using Spark Nade with Power Screen also increases the speed and range of the actual projectile. So make sure you utilize the two skills together. Theodore maximizes his energy and creates a short duration blast energy field. Allies moving towards the direction gets increased movement speed while the skill damages enemies hit. Using the ultimate also puts Theodore in an overcharged state, increasing his attack speed and lowering charge time needed to reach maximum energy cannon potential. Theodore's ultimate is Blast Energy Field, which has a wide and long range. The skill also leaves a field for a short duration that buffs teammates. 
However, the movement speed bonus only occurs when moving in the same direction the skill was shot to. Theodore uses his big freaking gun to keep his distance from the fight while supporting teammates and amplifying his output with power screen. Theodore is your man if you want to control the pace and outcome of the battle from range. Give him a try if you want a fresh teamfight experience. Due to his passive, Theodore is unable to build any additional HP for equipment. In order to make up for his lack of HP, we will opt into Omnivamp to increase his survivability just a bit. We're combining the Omnivamp with healing power in the build as well to amplify the healing effect. We chose the newest weapon, Plasma Rifle. Plasma Rifle offers a new option for snipers, as the weapon is a slot option for skill amp builds, while also having enough ammo to cycle Theodore's passive. The attack speed should help Theodore with basic attacks for passive as well. Cardinal Robes has low defense, but offers other high stats, especially in scale amp. The SP regen's always comfy, and the additional HP will play into a passive and convert to attack speed. We picked Imperial Crown for the head. The piece is in route while having high defense and scale amp. The defense helps us make up for the low defense on Cardinal Robes as well. The cooldown reduction offered with Imperial Crown is great as well, letting Theodore chain his abilities easier. Nightingale for our arm. The healing power synergizes extra well with Theodore's energy cannon. Especially in teamfights where Theodore aims to heal multiple teammates, the extra healing bonus can make a big difference. We went with SCV for our shoes. SCV offers Omnivamp and Skill Amp. While the amount of Skill Amp is lower than Straight Jacket sneakers, the Omnivamp offered lets Theodore have more sustain. As previously stated, the Omni event should help make up for the lack of additional HP. Uchiwa is our accessory. Uchiwa has a high amount of skill amp with SP regen. More importantly, the accessory also works as a slot for Omni Siphon. The item overall gives Theodore most of the stats he would want. Sentinel is our main choice for our augments. The augment periodically offers a shield when damaging an enemy with a skill. The shield helps Theodore make up for his low HP. In team modes, Sentinel applies to teammates as well, making your teamfight presence even scarier. For our sub augment, we went with Thorn Shackles, which gives more damage with Sparknade, and Petty Pincher for late game transitions. We went with Embolden and Cavalcade to give Theodore a bit more survivability even if the enemy team decides to focus on first. The plan we made is a 4 zone route. If Avenue isn't contested, we can also start Forest into Chapel, then continue into Avenue, then School. The first zone is Avenue. If the starting zone is fairly empty, make sure to use your starting movement speed bonus to get a looting distribution near the Hyperloop. We personally suggest either the cluster next to the firefighter station or the distribution near the security console. We also suggest equipping slippers or tights to increase your movement speed for the looting process. If you have a spare cloth, you can even make repaired slippers as well. Feel free to discard your starting bread and water as we'll be making healing potions down the road. The second zone is forest. We don't need to find too many items over here, but we can make healing potions. If you're confident you can juggle your inventory well, feel free to pick up a long rifle as well to pre-build the deadly ray. Make sure to check your minimap to see pings and chapel as well to avoid going after distributions that were already looted by enemies. Third zone is chapel. When entering chapel, pick between two distributions between cemetery side and dock side. Licking off her pings while farming forest will help a lot in making this decision. Our final zone is school. School is a fairly contested zone, so getting here late in the game might result in some missed items, especially bandages as we require two for this plan. In this case, feel free to go towards Alley to find missing items while hunting wild animals. If you successfully found all your items, you can go to Archery Range or Avenue, depending on where you think there will be fewer players.
tactically keeping a safe distance and utilizing his long distance, Theodore has joined Lumia Island. We hope Lumiapedia has helped at least just a tad bit in understanding our newest test subject. We'll see you next time for our spooky 63rd test subject. Bye bye!